get here. And I will start by stating the date today. Today is August 28th, 2021. Today marks the 30th anniversary to the day of the amnesty law, law 84 slash 91 that was adopted on August 28th, 1991, that gave pardon to all Lebanese warlords, that gave absolution to all political and wartime crimes, including crimes against humanity, crimes against human dignity, covering abduction, hostage taking, murders and massacres, all erased. Exempted from the law only were crimes committed against political and religious leaders. But if you had massacred innocent mothers and fathers, grandmothers and grandfathers, brothers, sisters, children, babies, a whole nation, you were worthy of a seat in parliament to govern the country. 30 years since we have been forgiven. Those who have butchered our nation and our people and given them the power to rule over, over us and lead us to the free falling disaster that is ransacking and, 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 and butchering once again, the live flesh of the Lebanese people. What really, what an eerily appropriate date to be holding a symposium that asks the question, how did we get here? So how did we get here? And more importantly, do you know, do you collective you, do we really know how bad here is? Because no matter what you think you know, even those who are living it day to day, it's worse than we've ever imagined. How did we get to a bankrupt banking system, whereas it was one of our pride sectors, the pillar of the economy? How, how did we become a state defaulting on our debt, which is the lowest rating in any sovereign state in terms of credit worthiness? How did we get to a population where an estimated 60% are below the poverty line, while we ranked for the majority of our contemporary history as one of the most prosperous countries in the world, if not certainly in the region. So please, let me give you the data. The GDP of Lebanon went from 52 billion US dollars in 2019, all the way down to $33.8 billion in 2020. That's a 36% drop in one goddamn year. So how is it possible that in 2020, we were back to the level of our GDP of 2008 using World Bank numbers? We fell 12 years behind in a matter of a few weeks, 12 years. I'm gonna go on. According to the World Bank, our 2020 GDP per capita was, and I have it here, 4,636.9 US dollars. That is 37% of the world's average. Let me explain what that means. We got to being 63% below the average GDP country in the world. How did that happen? These are the qualifications of an objectively poor country. How did we get to be such a poor country when our diaspora represents some of the most successful immigrant communities in the developed world? How can it be that two out of three of our neighboring states rank in the top tier of the world while we rank in the bottom 10%? Our GDP per capita in 2020 was 37% of the world's average while Cyprus was at 241% of the world average and Israel was at 268% of the world average. In 2020, Cyprus's GDP per capita is 6.5 times that of Lebanon and Israel's is seven times. And today it is estimated to be probably 10 times. You think that's scandalous? Wait till you hear this next piece of data. As I said, in 2020, our GDP per capita was 4,636.9 US dollars. Can you take a wild guess Everyone listening today, can you take a wild guess what it was in 1992? 2020, 4,636.9. What was it in 1992? What do you reckon? Was it higher or was it lower? In 1992, the GDP per capita of Lebanon was higher than that of 2020 at 4,767 US dollars. Can you hear what I'm saying? As a country, we are back 
to the GDP per capita that we had prior to 1992. They brought us back to the starting point, 30 years of lost wealth. The political class did not create a single iota of additional wealth per citizen. Today, our economic, social, and financial state is worse than a country that has just come out of 15 years of devastating civil war in 1990. How many countries are, were better off in 1992 than they are today, even in the third world. Very rare. Back then, we did not have a bankrupt uh, banking system. We did not have such a crippling debt. People's life savings were protected in the banks by a supposedly solid banking system, despite years of bloodshed, trauma, and war. Whereas now, 100 billion plus of people's life savings in US dollars have evaporated and are trapped merely as a computer entry in a, in a, in a zombie um, banking system. They destroyed the main pillar of the Lebanese economy. They impoverished a whole nation of people whose only fault, and I am one of them, all my life savings are in a bank in Beirut, is that we chose to live in our own country, that we've decided not to Im immigrate or expatriate ourselves. What does it say about us when we know that we were way better off in 1992 when the country was totally demolished and blown to smithereens? One of the biggest problems in post-war Lebanon was the demolished infrastructure because of the war. But guess what? 28 whopping years later, in 2017, 2018, the World Economic Forum ranked Lebanon, that's 28 years after the end of the war, 130 out of 137 countries in terms of quality of overall infrastructure. Meaning they estimate that 95% of the world has better infrastructure than we do. So what have they done in 30 goddamn years? What have they done? In 2017, 2018, that same report from the World uh, uh, Economic Forum um, ranked us as the third worst country in terms of quality of electricity supply, which is once again prior to any of the madness that we're currently living in. Behind, by the way, Haiti, Nigeria, and Yemen, respectively. Can you fathom how much of a political failure, of, of how much of a failure on all levels this political class is? Even war-torn countries are doing better than us. We are a failed state. Please understand that calling a country a failed state is a very, very serious and severe stipulation. It's the worst situation a country can possibly get itself into. Companies go bankrupt, countries fail. We have failed. We moved on from 15 years of civil war at the hands of a bunch of murderous militiamen, and instead of holding them accountable, we upgraded them from warlords to statesmen.